Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Okay. So people, I told you a few things. When we learned XML, we learned that XML does not have predefined what? Tags, nodes. Absolutely. See, you guys rock. You know that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So XML does not have predefined tag. That means everybody can create their own tags. Okay. Now consider if that's true, if that is the case, and we told that web services communicate with the help of web services communicate with XML. Right? So if web services communicate in XML and if web services uh, if XML do not have predefined tag, that means web services can communicate in undefined tags. Right? So what will happen? Sam will create his own service, web service, and he will start with Sam. Okay. Then Priya will create her own service, and Priya will create her own tag. Okay. And then Vijay is, is is very bad, so he will start with unfortunate tag name. So everybody can create their own tag, but is that recommended? Is that good? Of course not, right? If everybody creates their own tag, then what will happen? Okay, nobody can understand what's going on. So they come up with who? They come up with some tags which are predefined. Okay, so standardized protocol. Okay, so we need a protocol to communicate with. Okay, so that protocol is called that SOAP. Okay, okay, so this SOAP is simple object access protocol. Okay, so simple object access protocol is a protocol, is a set of rules, is a set of ground rules created so that everybody should not create their own set of tags. Okay? There should be something defined under the rules. Okay? So why these rules are important? Why these rules are so important? Let's consider a worldwide played game. Okay? So let's consider a game called cricket. Okay? We play cricket everywhere. Okay? So think about the countries who play cricket. India, okay, England, West Indies. We have a lot of countries who play cricket. Yeah, of course, I will not write that name. Okay, so I will, uh, otherwise, it will be end of this. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And Sri Lanka, and uh, we can name a lot. Okay, okay. So, consider this if we are playing the same game. Is all countries speak same language? No. Does their culture same? No. Is is the, their shape and size and population same? No. Okay. But the rules of cricket, whenever we play internationally, are always same, right? 
okay why because this protocol is needed otherwise there is no meaning in this game right so the pre definition of protocol is needed because software applications are like this one application understand java one application do not understand java it understand mainframes one is database application one is db2 application and n number of applications talk their own languages okay they need to come across a single platform a single protocol a single rule set to communicate in a standard way okay so they came up with a standard way uh, called as soap simple object access protocol okay so simple object access protocol is a protocol which standardized all the applications to communicate in and especially used for web services okay okay so what is simple object object uh, access protocol so soap is a protocol for accessing web services okay soap stands for simple object access protocol okay soap is a communication protocol okay web services communicate with the help of soap soap is for communicating between applications soap is a format for sending messages at least four of these points you need to mention in an interview if the person is asked at least four okay so communicates via internet soap is a platform independent soap is a language independent also okay so be xml based so be simple and extensible okay so provides a way to communicate between applications running on different operating systems remember this all points because you will be using soap in soap ui tool the new tool name itself is what soap ui okay in soap ui tool you will be using soap for accessing web services testing web services okay okay so how does this soap look like what is this soap really looks like so this soap looks like an ordinary xml document so rather than going through this i will show you xml document altogether okay vandana if you can't see it can you try to rejoin because everybody else is fine okay try to rejoin okay so this is a representation of soap okay so consider this first this soap envelope okay soap envelope has entire soap message okay so this is soap envelope okay consider this as an envelope an envelope has all the contents so envelope has header and body and in body you will have this input and output parameters so you need to send inputs in body okay so this is called as soap body okay now there is a element called as fault okay if you are expecting a error from server like this which we showed which i showed you if you are expecting an error like this then that error should come under fault okay elements containing error and status information so soap fault will have errors in body you will send a real input parameters and you will also re receive the response in soap body okay so see here soap envelope is a starter what is this i will tell you then see soap header header is a important information about the data just like header of an article okay then you have soap body okay body has actual information to be transmitted if there is a fault if there is no fault then there will not be any soap fault okay if there is a fault if response has the exception 
again response only response can have exception not you cannot send exception to soap okay it will be written in fault okay so if there is a response you are expecting from the service that there is a error message should come or there is a problem in your communication or something it will come as a soap fault okay and this all enclosed in soap envelope now remember here this xml has a typical format this soap column header soap column header soap column body okay so this soap column is coming from this namespace and namespace is called as dictionary so for you just understand this xml ms is xml namespace used for providing uniquely name element so these elements are predefined somewhere right so body so header so this header body fault envelope these elements are predefined somewhere like in a language okay and we use this xml ns means we are providing a dictionary where xml should look the meaning of this objects meaning of these words okay so this is like a dictionary so this is the dictionary of words we are using within xml same we look in english words in english dictionary german one in german okay so similarly we provide xml ns means namespace that is a dictionary of the word we will be using in this xml okay okay let me check questions i got few why we need soap i told you the soap is the xml which you will be sending to web service okay for testing uh we see this is pretty um we hear a lot about groovy also so is groovy like soap ui another uh, groovy communication okay groovy is a language groovy is also a tool okay groovy is both okay and it's also used for testing for lot many applications okay uh not like java though it's pretty simple but we are not considering groovy as of now okay as of now we will only understand soap ui tool okay no i Whether understand groovy... because in the interview they might ask what are the other uh, you are um, aware of so just wanted to confirm that groovy is on the same line as of yes you. yes groovy is on the same line but groovy is more like a language okay it's not a pure tool so the tools like soap ui are like um, jmeter so there is another tool called like jmeter which is also web services testing tool okay so you can tell that too i have some more questions here four time name in visual is similar to soap header why uh -huh. you are comparing this to these are totally different things no wait a second let me answer two questions first. okay different between xml and soap soap is organized okay soap is written in an xml format xml is a format soap it has predefined tags okay soap has predefined tag soap is the only tool for xml no that's a wrong sentence soap is not a tool soap is just another format it's a protocol it's a set it's a ground rule okay we are getting output result on the same page and uh, other place we'll get in the same place there are only two tools i told you so you why we we gonna to we gonna use another is j meter okay soap ui is a tool yes soap is a technology soap is a term soap ui is a tool which you gonna install what makes soap different from html html is for view soap is a protocol it's totally different difference between xml and soap there is no difference between xml and soap soap is written in xml i told you okay soap is xml soap is yes 
protocol. Now you got it. SOAP is a protocol. What is the meaning of SOAP UI? No, no. SOAP UI is a tool. SOAP is a protocol. SOAP UI is a tool. Okay. Okay. SOAP UI is used to test web services that have results. Is that absolutely right? Rupa, you are on the track. XML NS is a dictionary. XML NS, whenever you tell XML NS SOAP, means whenever you are using SOAP word, that means you will be referring to this dictionary. Okay? So header is explained in this dictionary, this one. Okay? And encoding style, encoding style explains that uh, what is the style of encoding means. Okay, there are some formats, so this, these are a lot of stuff in there. Okay? There is a unified text format like UP of 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. It gets much complicated. So do not go in that deep. You don't need it that much. You just need to know what is SOAP and what are the important stuff in here. For Java people though, yes, definitely, you are going to know and we will discuss this over. Okay? You don't have to write this. It will be generated for you. You need to understand this. So are we, we are not discussing Groovy. We are not discussing Groovy. Okay, so do not ask questions on Groovy today. We can have another session on Groovy, then we can discuss on Groovy. So you have written there about if response has exception. Um, does it mean that we need to encode whatever we have exception we need to catch, we have to write it uh, under the fault header. You do not have to write it again, again, you do not have to write this as well. This is generated. You need to understand this. Okay? We are not writing anything. That is Anju Panel. Okay. Now I will show you a real quick example okay. which explains you much more on this. Okay. Okay. So let's take questions later. Okay, so I told you a game of cricket here. Okay, rules of cricket, and we are playing internationally. Okay, now think about this. When you are not playing internationally, what you decide is, okay, now you are making on a road cricket, right? You decide what you decide. Mr. Mishra's house is six runs, right? And Venkat house is four runs. So what are these rules? These are not like international rules as such. So if you are playing cricket in your own ground, if you are playing a gully cricket or road cricket, you define your own rules, right? So certain kinds of protocols are similar to these gully cricket, okay? So when we play cricket internationally, so whenever we have web services for entire world, Bank of America, weather.com, okay, services for enter, Amazon.com, entire world. So you created services for entire world, you will use simple object, object, object access protocol, so based web services. But if you are playing in your own company, if you do not want that web service to publish to entire world, you are using it internally, then you use RESTful web services. This is the major difference between RESTful and SOAP, okay? RESTful web services are created for internal use purpose. These are not published web services on internet, okay? These are on intranet, okay? Within the company, okay? These are for internet, for the world. Okay? So REST is representational state transfer. Why somebody calls that? Don't worry about it. REST is an architecture style for designing network application. Okay? Within the network, within internal. Okay? REST uses HTTP for all thread operation means reading, writing, updating, deleting, all kind of operation whatever possible by a website. All these operations are done in the HTTP manner. Okay? It's a lightweight alternative. For RPC, now what is RPC again? For Java people, it's important. For you, it's not important. And SOAP based web services. Okay? So it's a lightweight alternative. You do not have to have a big ground to play a gully cricket, right? 
you can you can start a stump sort of a cycle and you can just start playing cricket okay you just want to enjoy you just want to play internally okay you are not playing for state or for a country okay rest is not the standard so you cannot say at at international level that mr mishkar house will be six runs of course not it's not a standard at all there will be never wcc recommendation for rest because it's not at all a standard you created your own rules okay such services are restful web services a standard xml which doesn't have any predefined tag is used in a restful web services so restful web services do not have a standard predefined tag set okay like soap has okay so that's the difference between soap and rest okay so today we will start an example of soap ui okay so even if you installed it doesn't mean that you should start it immediately look at this you will get this slide this is very simple okay you just need to follow properly okay so i just have everything is given in the slide for you double click soap ui icon on your desktop if it is there on a desktop okay you don't have to do anything else just double click on here then the this the soap ui will load once it get loaded you will get you will see this screen it is like this i already started this okay Just don't worry about this currency converter this particular place is called as workspace okay and this place is called as navigator or explorer okay so let me show you here this is navigator or explorer in navigator and it is shown here and this is workspace okay now creating a new project in soap ui okay you need to create a new project right click on the projects and click on new new soap ui project right click on the project new soap ui project okay or click on file menu select new soap ui project people who are not concentrating i will not be repeating for you file let me cancel this you other have options like this file new soap ui project see here you got the same option now you need to give a result and the url i gave you you can use that and this using this url you need to give a result here just paste this url like here now the things are auto populated project name is global weather so this is auto auto populated it takes the name from here okay it takes the name from here so just take the name from here it will be copied here okay it will have lot of check boxes we will learn about this later as of now you just need one create request and create simple request for all operations okay this is already checked okay so keep it as checked do not uncheck this keep it as checked one okay this will create a request for you i will show you what exactly it create for you okay and just click on okay this will add the web services project under your projects folder so you can see global weather is added here it has two web services so basically this is two port names global weather soap and two operations first is get city by country and second is get weather two operations okay that's why i told you what is operation what is the port type this is port time has two things okay this is exactly same there is another example there okay now see here in get cities by country i just click on this plus sign i got this request one so when we check that box to create request this gets generated for you request okay 
So see get whether I just click on this plus sign. It is to also has request one. Okay. Now double click on this request one. You will see a web service input. Okay. This is a SOAP based input. This is a request to get weather service. Get weather web service has this request and see what is the request. It is in a SOAP format. This is in a SOAP format. Okay. See SOAP envelope. SOAP header. SOAP body. Okay. Then web services name get weather and you have to just give city name or optional country name, both are optional. Okay, now I just write city name here. Okay, and this is optional, so I am not passing anything, so I can delete this. Okay, and just click on this green button. Okay, so I got a fault. Servers were unable to process. So this fault comes in SOAP fault. Okay. So we already saw this what is SOAP fault. So whenever the fault comes, whenever there is a problem, see there is a SQL exception. So you can write a test case that you passed a proper city, but you got a SQL exception. Okay. So you can use that. You can write the test case and you can mark that test case has failed. Okay. Yeah, of course he's a bug. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you are interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269 a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.